Hi everyone, thank you for attending today's webinar on harnessing CFD to scale your process. My name is Darren Capelli and I'm a process development engineer here at APC and I'm based out of Dublin, Ireland. I'd like to start with a high level overview of what we will cover today. The first section will cover the importance of scaling your process and the key parameters which must be understood for a successful scale up or scale down. In the next section, I'll discuss how computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, can be used to help scale your process. You will learn how the multi-physics capabilities of this approach make it a powerful tool for modern manufacturers, as it can provide insights into your process that might not be possible through physical experimentation alone. In section three, I'll discuss how APC deploys CFD to solve scale-up difficulties posed by industry through a series of case studies. You will learn how simulation data can be used to optimize your scaled process. To introduce APC, we are a CRO or a contract research organization based out of Dublin, Ireland. However, we like to think of ourselves as an information partner. Our mission, as presented here, is to accelerate the development of quality, life changing medicines to patients. We do this through partnering with large pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical companies across a range of modalities around the world to accelerate the delivery of their medicines to the market through process development and ultimately accelerating the delivery of that medicine to the patient. APC employs a world-class team comprising of over 180 scientists and engineers working across a range of specialities and modalities from small molecule to large molecule. Through synergy of chemistry, biology and engineering, we offer value by enabling rapid process feasibility, process definition development and characterization so our partners can accelerate the development process. Scaling a process or operation is an important concept in industry. Operating conditions, such as agitation rate and gas sparging rate, at one scale will not produce the same output at different scales. This is because these parameters are non-scalable. Performing a scaling operation whilst keeping them constant will result in a different flow environment within your vessel. Mixing and heat and mass transfer will vary depending on your scale. Therefore, it is important to select parameters which are scalable. The critical parameters of scaling are parameters which should remain constant regardless of the scale of operation. They are therefore considered scalable. A significant change in any one of mixing time, shear or, ma or the mass transfer coefficient after a scaling operation could have detrimental impact on your process and therefore must be avoided. Understanding these parameters is pivotal for a successful scaling operation, so we will investigate each parameter individually. Mixing is a physical operation that interchanges material between different locations to reduce non-uniformities in the fluid. It is an important parameter for biological and chemical systems. It controls the, the culture temperature and the cell's access to dissolved nutrients and oxygen for biological systems and can be the limiting step in a chemical systems if the reactants are not suitably mixed and available for reaction. Mixing can be characterized on three different scales macro, meso and micro mixing, which correspond to the bulk liquid, droplet and molecular scale respectively. As scale increases, so does mixing time. Macro, meso and micro timescales can be predicted from mixing time engineering correlations. All I would like you to do on this slide is to focus your attention on one term that all of these equations share. Epsilon. This is the energy dissipation per unit mass or the power per unit mass. Again, power per unit mass. Please remember that term as you're going to see it a lot and it will be discussed shortly. The mixing time is therefore a function of the power input into the system. Shear specifically relates to the energy dissipation in the vessel as a result of mixing. Energy is introduced by the impeller and is consumed by the nearby fluid and particles, the cells. 
a high rate of energy dissipation or shear can have a negative impact on the particles themselves for biological processes. Shear controls crystal size for crystallization processes. The vessel average turbulent shear describes the shear in the bulk liquid, shown in blue in the picture. The impeller average shear describes the shear around the impeller, which is shown in red in the picture. The vessel average shear and the impeller average shear can also be predicted from engineering correlations. Again, the term of interest in these equations is P over V, in this case, the power per unit volume. So the shear is also a function of the power input into the system. The mass transfer coefficient can be described as the resistance to mass transfer. In aerobic systems, the mass transfer coefficient dictates how fast oxygen can be transported from the air into the cell. Slow mass transfer will negatively affect the cell metabolism. For biological systems, the Van Wright engineering correlation can be used to predict the mass transfer coefficient, KLA. It should be noted that the power dissipation per unit mass, or epsilon, is a function of this mass transfer coefficient, and therefore the mass transfer coefficient is a function of the power input into the system. The mixing time, shear, and the mass transfer coefficient are all functions of the power input into the system. This parameter is key to a successful scale up as the ratio of power to mass must remain constant for, this, for the entire system. A successful system scaling generally involves a constant power per unit volume. Power can be passed into the system through an impeller. The equation describing the power requirement of the system is a function of the power number, n subscript p, the density, rho, the agitation rate, n, and the impeller diameter, d. Note how the agitation rate is to the power of 3 and the impeller diameter is to the power of 5. This relationship is far from linear and explains why the agitation rate is not a scalable parameter. The power number is a dimensionless number used during scaling operations to predict the power input into a system. The example graph from literature shows the power number on the y-axis and the impeller Reynolds number on the x-axis for different impeller configurations. Note how the power number is unique to the impeller and that it becomes constant at high Ren impeller Reynolds numbers. CFD methodologies are frequently used in industries such as aerospace, automobile, turbo machinery, battery manufacturing, and much more. It is the discipline of science devoted to predicting fluid flow, heat transfer, and mass transfer phenomena by solving the mathematical models that govern these processes. This multi-physics approach makes it a powerful tool for modern manufacturers, as it can provide insights into a process that might not be possible through physical experimentation. At APC, we adopt a three-phase approach for every CFD simulation. Visualize, analyze, and optimize. The first simulation is always at the original operating scale. Once the simulation has finished, we visually illustrate what is happening in your process. From the velocity profile, the areas of high shear, whether vortexing is occurring. The analysis phase involves analyzing the data output of the simulation. This includes power number determination and mixing time analysis. These are more difficult to illustrate and are usually graphical outputs. The final phase is optimization, where we calculate the optimum operating conditions of your scale up and run a simulation with these conditions. A comparison is then drawn between the original and scaled process. Here we have some examples of visual outputs of shear, velocity, and vortexing from CFD simulations. Any variable or parameter of interest can have a visual representation. These profiles provide access to data that physical experimentation does not allow. For example, a probe only tells you the value in the specific area, whereas a CFD simulation could give you a temperature distribution or a species concentration throughout the entire vessel. This allows for detection of hotspots, or areas of concern. 
CFD simulations generate a large amount of data. Harnessing this data can provide useful insight into your process. The top two graphs show shear and velocity distributions throughout the vessel, where the y-axis is percentage volume. The use of CFD provides a power number unique to your system as it is calculated from the moment on the impeller blades from the central shaft. The macro mixing time for your system can also be determined using the COV technique. It works by introducing dye and determining the time required for the system to reach uniform concentration. Mixing time coefficients shown previously can also be regressed from the data if more simulation runs were to be performed at different power inputs or agitation rates. Once the power number for the system has been extracted, it is then possible to calculate the optimum agitation rate at the new scaled volume. That is if the power per unit volume was determined as the critical scaling parameter. An example scale up using constant power per unit volume is shown. Step one is to determine the power requirement at the initial operating scale. This can be achieved from the moment, M, which is an output from the CFD simulation. Step two is to calculate the power number using the power calculated from the previous step. Step three is to calculate the power requirement at the new scale using constant power per unit volume. And step four is to calculate the optimized agitation rate using the power number from step two and the power requirement at the new scale using the equation from step three. It is assumed that the power number is constant across scales, which can be verified through a simple Reynolds number calculation. Optimization of your process using CFD can reduce the number of physical laboratory experiments and eliminate the reliance on empirical correlations such as power number and mixing coefficients. The deployment of CFD at APC has led to improved accuracy and process understanding for our clients. We have developed a lot of experience in solving scalar problems posed by industry. Our approach starts with a succinct outline of the problem statement, followed by the identification of the key challenges to be overcome. The information is then used to draft a method to solve the scale of problem. I'm going to take you through a few case studies. This case study involved the tech transfer of a process from CMO1 to CMO2. APC were asked to recommend an optimum agitation rate and dosing rate range for the execution of an API crystallization in CMO2 to deliver robust particle size distribution. There were two sets of challenges associated with the scale up. The first being that the crystallization vessel in CMO2 was geometrically different to that in CMO1. The second was choosing an appropriate scale up criteria to deliver a robust particle size distribution across different scales. The second challenge required tackling before we could attempt to scale up from CMO1 to CMO2. The APC Optimax reactors were used to determine what the scale up criteria should be as they had a particle size distribution function. DynoChem was used for the initial scale down, where the power per unit mass and the mesomixing times were identified as possible critical parameters. It is evident from the graphs that the particle size distribution remains relatively matched when the power per unit mass was the scaling parameter. We have therefore found our critical parameter. CFD was then used to scale up from CMO1 to CMO2 using the power per unit mass as the critical scaling parameter. Initial simulations were carried out to assess the mixing environment and the impeller power number. It was then possible to calculate the optimum agitation rate by scaling up using the constant power per unit mass. A possible problem associated with the geometry of CMO2 was the conical design of its base, which may have caused problems suspending solids. However, the CFD simulation was able to prove that there were no problems at the optimum agitation rate. In this next case study, APC were asked to use CFD to compare the hydrodynamic environment between three single-use bioreactors, or SUBs, specifically focusing on shear, mixing time, air sparging strategy, 
that is a drilled hole versus a disc, and power input per unit volume. We were also asked to identify the optimum agitation rate and air sparging ratio in the largest SUB. Challenges associated with the activity included ensuring that the sparging did not damage the cells and that the Kolmogorov scale was not the same scale as the cells. The power per unit volume was employed as the critical scaling parameter in determining the optimum operating conditions of the largest SUB. The Kolmogorov scale was identified as a limiting factor and therefore had to be monitored to ensure that it was not the same scale as the cells. The power number was calculated for the largest SUB and the optimum agitation rate was then calculated using a constant power per unit volume. CFD was used to ensure that the resulting Kolmogorov scale was not too low for the air sparging strategy and agitation rate. That concludes this webinar. Thank you for joining today. I think we now have some time for questions.